Hello, my name is Marcus. I'm the compiler of a collection of therapy quotes entitled Psychoanalytic Self-Awareness Quotes. This is TQ 174 to 177. Therapy quote number 174. In a traumatic moment, the child cannot assimilate events in narrative memory and may intensify attachment. Their sense of agency, identity, and integrity are diminished as if their agency has been supplanted by the aggressor's goals. So this is a follow-up to TQ-134 on the identification with the aggressor. So here, again, uh, it, during the stage of symbiosis, uh, from birth to six months, the child doesn't know where he ends, where he ends and his mother begins. Boundaries are blurred, there's fusion symbiosis. Uh, and the, the child uh, has thoughts and his mother ha has thoughts but he doesn't know that there's a mother's and since the child and due to infantile megalomania he may think that his mother's thoughts are his thoughts that's the identification with the aggressor because the mother didn't wasn't patient enough to allow the child to develop his thoughts she just imposed her thoughts into that orbit and the child identified with it. So that's a kind of de developmental trauma. Um, so there's a, just an, an elaboration as well on this defense mechanism known as identification with the aggressor, which can lead to the narcissistic pattern. Right. TQ175. There exists a formidable universal psychological resistance to the idea of a depriving parent. See, that's a byproduct of the identification with the aggressor. How, how do you, where do you go from there? Where does a, a traumatized, how does a trauma, child, traumatized child uh, who grows up and becomes an adult where does he get the idea that his mother may have done something wrong? Because he is the mother. His identity is the mother. He's identified with the aggressor. So, right. So this relates to splitting from the defense mechanism of splitting, as mentioned in previous videos. Uh, the baby uh, forms two images of his mother, the rejecting mother and the the satisfying mother, the gratifying mother. And these are two images the child creates. And uh, normally it gets healed by the age of three into whole object relations. But if this splitting arrangement is remains in the psyche and there's petrification there, um, splitting precludes mourning. So to recognize that the mother may have been unavailable, caught in her existential dilemma, she may not have been able to have been able to offer her love to the baby. This idea is difficult, a formidable universal psychological resistance. It, there's a resistance to accepting this because in order because if we do accept that mother was imperfect, now we're bringing now we're bringing up the memories of how it was when the mother wasn't available. And, and that's the mourning process. That's called the working through process. So mourning is difficult when there's been an insecure attachment style. When the child has a secure attachment style, they can mourn, they have whole object relations, Ubuntu, they've achieved a psychological birth of the self, they know their real self, they're in touch with uh, the capacities of the real self, their goals come from the real self, not the defensive self. But if you have the insecure attachment style, uh, it's hard to mourn. So there's a resistance to mourning. I think that's what they're referring to. There's a formidable resistance to the idea of mother being unloving at times. Maybe cognitively we can recognize it, but that's that's just that's just part of it. Um, to to emotionally feel that that that's the journey of mourning, right? Why? Because of one seventy six. <laughs> Those painful memories, they make us 
who we are. So again, our identities very much formed by the age of five in, in terms of the psychic structure. So if there, if there have been painful memories uh, that causes the psychic structure to crystallize, to petrify, and we're influenced by this psychic world. And identity is uh, very much influenced by this psychic world. And it's as if those painful memories make us who we are. It's as if. You know. That was from a TV show. 177. Dreams can be said to express the thoughts of the unconscious. The language of the unconscious is an as-if language, and every dream could be preceded by the words, it is like this in your soul today. So considering uh, self-reflection can bring up dreams and um, and the, I like what he says, you know, you're unconscious, your soul is saying with the dream, it is like this in your soul today. <laughs> so remember in a previous quote in Keeping a Dream Journal, T-TAC or T-T-A-K, when there's a dream, if you remember it as quickly as possible, create a title for the dream, identify the theme of the dream. What's the affect, the main affect in this dream? And any question you, that you have around it or that, or any question that the dream may be asking or any dream that you can come up around this dream. Or what is the dream asking? All right? So T-T-A-Q, T-T-A-C, title, theme, affect, question. Title, Theme, affect, feeling, question. Right. Okay, so I'll just run through them. In the traumatic moment, the child cannot assimilate events in narrative memory and may intensify attachment. Their sense of agency, identity, and integrity are diminished as if their agency has been supplanted by this, the aggressor's goals. There exists a formidable universal psychological resistance to the idea of a depriving parent. Those painful memories, they make us who we are. Dreams can be said to express the thoughts of the unconscious. The language of the unconscious is an as-if language, and every dream could be preceded by the words it is like this in your soul today. So there's the idea that your unconscious is a, is a friend, it's an ally. Baba Yaga, remember the personification. The director of this unconscious world is Baba Yaga. So you could say it's Baba Yaga is communicating to you, right? Or you could say it's Poseidon communicating to you. See, sometimes the unconscious is represented in fairy tales as the ocean, and the ocean uh, in myth is Poseidon, right? The god Poseidon, right? So you could say, right? Poseidon is Baba Yaga or Poseidon, the unconscious, your soul, your inner world is, is talking to you. It's telling you, it is like this in your soul today. Here's our situation. Here's your situation. We're a part of you. Right. Listen to us, right? <laughs> that first quote about narrative memory, the child cannot assimilate events in narrative memory. See, there's that attacks on linking theory from a previous video. One symptom of trauma, an emotional tsunami is a trauma, an after effect or a shadow of that emotional tsunami. One byproduct is that the mind's ability to link things is, is broken. He calls it the attacks on links. So, so the symptom of trauma is the mind will attack links, that the traumatic memories will attack the links. 
the person's ability to create links. Right. So the therapist creates a narrative. He constructs the story, a, a, a more complete, a more contextual, a more adaptive story. So the interpretation is has more detail to help the person to help create that narrative. That's why people say stories are healing. You want that narrative to include what happened, because from the child's point of view, there's there's no language there, so we don't know what happened per se. That's why we have fairy tales and myths, to so that we can consciously see what happened. But um, yeah, I think I think that's a, a proverb in in traditional cultures. Stories are medicine. You know, stories are narrative medicine kind of thing. So an interpretation is like a, a story as well. Right? We're updating the story. We're, we're creating a story that includes the, tra the traumatic memories. We're trying to integrate it all. Right? You know, that's why Burglar says, you know, he, he says if you're reading a good story, a good novel, and you're feeling something, but you don't know what, why it is you're feeling that, he said, that's from the unconscious, that's real, that's a good writer. So he says a good writer is someone that can elicit those feelings in you, and you're not, maybe sure to, you're not fully sure what, what it's about. Um, and then maybe the reader kind of rationalizes it away. But uh, that's the, the same with the fairy tale. You, you read the fairy tale, you feel something, there's something there, but you don't understand it, right? <laughs> it's trying to, it's trying to, it's trying to communicate what it's like in your soul today, right? <laughs> yeah, John A. Sanford, he, he's, he's similar to the Ulanovs. He tried to bridge the metaphorical world and a psychoanalytic perspective. He's also one of these authors that tried to bring the two together, uh, right? I guess I'll just leave it here. So thank you very much. This has been TQ174 to 177. See you next time.